Hello, everyone. This is Noah Villaverde, host of Blank Green Canvas, back again. And this week, I am joined once again by my good friend from New York. Uh, John Maffio. You can also know me as Mothman Jones on the YouTubes. Yes, indeed. And before we get started on our discussion, John, how have you been over the last two weeks? I've uh, been pretty good. Been pretty good. Uh, we just got our couch that I'm sitting on right now. So more apartment news. <laughs> I'm um, okay. looking for the vaccine actively. I'm um, looking to get my first appointment for the first dose. Not successful so far. Uh, everybody's taking uh, spots very quickly, but hopefully I get something mm -hmm. soon. Uh, and yeah, it's been li living and working. How about you? Uh, that's uh, that's great to hear that you're, that you're actively looking for yours. Uh, I actually got my first dose of Moderna about yes. a week or so ago actually. And um, in terms of side effects, I had a bit of a left shoulder uh, being sore because that's where I got my my shot, my first shot. That's all I really had in regards to side effects. If anyone wants to know how it may feel when they get theirs eventually, but I definitely look forward to getting fully vaccinated uh, in the next few weeks. And yeah, so that was cool. In other news, I recently started a new job uh, at Starbucks, yes. actually. And I've been uh, training there last week, and this week was my first time on the floor post-training. So it's definitely a, a nice new uh, learning experience there. You know, it's fun. I love coffee, you know, and I enjoy tea. So it's it's fun to put those drinks together and serve them to people. And, your and real also, yeah, sure. And also, I had a chance to return to the movie theaters for the first time in five months for a little, a little movie called Godzilla vs. Kong. I don't know if you've heard of that film. Uh, it is some lizard and some monkey that don't like each other for some reason. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. It's a giant lizard and a giant gorilla. And, uh, I'm going to be putting a video about my thoughts on that film, uh, together within the next few days. So, um, if anyone wants, wants to know my thoughts on that film, uh, stay tuned to blank green canvas on YouTube. Nice. Can't wait for those. Looking forward to that. Thanks, John. And now uh, we've been gone for about a week or so, but this week we're going to be continuing our discussion on The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the newest series from Marvel Studios and uh, exclusively streaming on Disney+. Plus. And the last time we discussed, we were discussing the very first episode, which is one of six. Now we're going to be discussing episodes two and three. And I got to say, uh, in terms of what the show is doing so far, this definitely feels more cinematic than WandaVision has. Granted, WandaVision is obviously television specific in its theme and its tropes already. Mm -hmm. So I got to say, like in regards to the show, I feel like this would have also benefited from being basically a fourth Captain America movie. I don't know. What did you think? What would you um, say? So I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I, I think it does have a cinematic quality to it, but I'm not exactly feeling the show the way I thought I would yet. I don't know if it's because something's, I don't know if it's the pacing or if it's like something's waiting to happen. Um, but I do agree that it does feel like an extension of the Captain America movies. And if it was a movie that released, in another timeline somewhere, if it was just the, the Captain, the, the Bucky and the Winter Soldier, the Bucky and the Captain and the Falcon movie. Um, it seems like it would be, this is, a, this is the tone and the feel of what it would probably be. And we'll get into it with the characters that come back and how they're doing it. Um, but there yeah. are a lot, of, I can see a lot of dynamics that are starting to come together. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with certain characters, in particular, a Zemo and a Sharon Carter, uh, if we get Which more we'll get with to, them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And we'll get to those two characters when we discuss episode three. But let's talk about episode two first, which is titled The Star-Spangled Man, which is obviously a reference to Captain America himself, which we know as Steve Rogers for the last 10 years. But now, uh, because Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon, did not want to pick up the mantle this time around, behind his back, the government decided to appoint this man named John Walker, played by Wyatt Russell, as the new Captain America. And the episode begins in a way where it introduces us to John Walker. And initially, uh, he doesn't seem to be that bad of a guy. He seems like somebody who is a bit like nervous, obviously, about the opportunity. But he 
He's on Good Morning America. There's this uh, marching band playing the Star Spangled Man song from the original Captain America movie, which was a nice touch. And, you know, on the outset, uh, obviously taking away what we may know about this character later on, he doesn't seem that bad, but he definitely seems like he's entitled, a little bit entitled to uh, this Mm. opportunity, to say the least. Well, I can see that for sure. And they get you in there with the Wyatt Russell casting in the beginning where he seems like a humble guy and seems like a guy who is being presented with an opportunity. And he's just kind of like, I, I mean, I'm just doing my best here. Uh, but then, yeah, you start to unravel a little bit and him with his partner of sorts. And yeah, you start yeah. to see like maybe uh, maybe not the best guy to wear yeah. the mantle. Yeah, indeed. He definitely like based as as the show goes on. Like, it starts off, and we even see him in an action scene, which we'll get to, where it looks like, oh, he seems to have some noble intentions. I know we don't like him because that should be Sam, but okay. But then, as it goes on, we learn or notice that he crosses a few lines that we wouldn't see our ideal Captain America cross, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know. So, when we're introduced to him, and then we see uh, Sam and Bucky finally reunite for a mission. You know, like they finally reunite after a few months, about six months, I believe, in regards to the Flag Smashers in Munich. So uh, they have to go on this mission. Uh, and it's it's just for one, I, I love uh, I love Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan together. I just think that they have a really fun rapport with one another. I love yeah. that line that they have where uh, where, uh, you know, uh, Sam is surprised by Bucky being familiar with Gandalf and the Hobbit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like he was around in 1936 to read it, as he says. Yeah, talk about a flex, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he imagine, actually yeah, read like, it when it came out. When it, yeah, imagine how he must have reacted. Back. Imagine how he must have reacted watching those movies if he got a chance to. <laughs> All right, oh, that, that's yeah. that would be a fun little perspective to have, like a little line or two. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. But also, like, so they reunite, they go on their mission, and they deal with the flag smashers. And they get their asses handed to them for a bit. And then while on this mission, thankfully, um, you know, uh, the new Captain America himself comes in and his buddy and they help them out, take care of the Flag Smashers in that moment. Although, obviously, they still have to find them on the way. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a solid action scene, you know, definitely feels akin to the Captain America movies that we've seen in the past. You know, yeah. in regards to like, especially like Winter Soldier and Civil War. You very know, like, one... uh, I'm sorry, no, very, very like Born esque to me, like very Paul Greengrass. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of handheld. You know, makes mm-hmm. it feel very intense in a lot of ways. You know, and after this big battle, uh, uh, Sam and Bucky are pretty. Uh, they they don't know how to feel obviously about like what they just dealt with, so they're just kind of walking. And John Walker offers to give them a ride, which they reluctantly take. And John Walker really wants to have Sam and Bucky at their side. And when he mentions to Sam, like, look, I really appreciate having, you know, Steve Rogers, um, right hand man, right hand men by my side. Sam takes takes that a certain way where he's just feeling like, wow, it's always I'm always a sidekick, essentially, Mm -hmm. you know, which which definitely must frustrate him, you know, on top of the other things that Sam has to deal with, given like situations regarding his family and all that. He's taking yeah. a lot as his book. Yeah. Little jabs. You know. Yeah. They're both getting yeah. annihilated in ter- in this, in this certain way. Psychologically. Yes. Which then leads to probably my, my most, uh, my favorite part of the episode where uh, Bucky reveals to Sam a certain figure in his past uh, and in America's past, really, that really adds context to the history of the, not only the super soldier program, but also to um, the MCU and America itself in a way. When uh, Sam introduces him to, let me find his name. I want to get it right. His oh, name yeah. was Isaiah Bradley. They go I had to no idea who his and... character was. <laughs> yes. I was trying to figure Same out the here. entire time. Same here. I wasn't familiar uh, with this character either. But Isaiah Bradley was somebody, he was a veteran super soldier who fought Bucky when he was the Winter Soldier during the Korean War. And Bradley is a recluse at this point, and he refuses to help them uncover information regarding additional super soldiers because he himself was imprisoned and experimented on by the U.S. government and Hydra for about 30 years. He's bitter. 
and rightfully so, I'd say. And this this really angers Sam, to say the least, because he he learns that there was a black super soldier this whole time. And not only did he not know, nobody knew, which really plays into a very interesting commentary, obviously, on how there is so many so much history regarding uh, black Americans and their achievements, whether it's uh, defending America or, you know, any other achievements. And it definitely Mm -hmm. makes this feel more contemporary. Interesting. This was my favorite moment of the episode. Like I thought it was a really great way to develop the story. Yeah. And I felt raw too. And we don't really get a lot of that in this, in this, this is another great, like the outlet of having these shows where they could explore elements like this where it really gets into the politics and seeing how angry this this character, this Isaiah guy, gets when he wants like get out of my house, like oh shit, like all right, you're really yeah, you you're really triggering feel, him in a way. You can't help but feel really, really sad about it. You know? Oh yeah, and especially and, the fact that Steve didn't know. Steve didn't know about this either. You know, no. so it's one of those things that's like wow, <laughs> like there's a lot of uh, things that that like it makes the world feel real. You know, not just like oh yeah, yeah. this is uh, superheroes and you know, um, sorcerers and all that, you know, and it brings it really down to earth and makes it really more dynamic, I'd say. For sure. It adds more nuance to the world. Yeah. yeah so um, then this leads to, uh, you know, Barnes, like Bucky Barnes, he gets arrested because he missed his appointment, his court mandated appointment for therapy. And then he and uh, Sam have a, another fun little dynamic together, which we see in one of the trailers where they have to do basically, it feels like couples therapy almost in a way. Mm-hmm. It, it was, yeah. it was ridiculous. It was very like lethal weapon where you have these two like bickering at each oh, other. Yeah. And, like, like they have a staring contest and like, oh, you want me to get closer? Or you want to get locked in? Or, Let's get locked in. And they oh, play, yeah. pull a little closer. Very petty. Yeah. All these little things, you know, and then, you know, they run into John Walker again and, once again, they refuse to work with him. So because of this, Bucky suggests to Sam, hey, you know what? If you want to take down these flag smashers, how about we how about we reconnect with old Baron Zemo? You know, because that's definitely a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Which I got to say, like going into the next episode, uh, I think this was a bit of a surprise because based on the trailers, I thought Baron Zemo would be maybe not the primary antagonist, but like a prominent one throughout the story so far. I mean, obviously that could change, you know, yeah, given I agree. where the show is going to go. But I thought it was a bit of a pleasant surprise that, you know, like Bucky goes back to the to the prison where uh, Zemo is at and basically gets him out so they could use him for help to um, find a way to learn more about the origins of the new super soldier uh, serum that has been out there about 20 Uh doses made which we'll get into and you know it's it leads to this fun you know dynamic between sam bucky and zemo and it's a really interesting uh alliance if you will yeah it almost it just just, as you're speaking about it just like i made like the connection it almost kind of reminds me of door the dark world where uh Door has to reconnect. Like he he breaks Loki out of the prison, and they have to work together. Oh yeah, to right. Like yeah, get get to accomplish a goal. But like, yeah, it's interesting to see Zemo on the other side, and also how they kind of just mentioned that. Oh yeah, I'm a Baron. I'm rich. I have a private. Oh jet. yeah. Oh yeah. You're like oh, okay. Him on the yeah, private like, jet. So they travel to Madripoor. You know, it's this criminal sanctuary city island kind of place, and uh, you know they meet with uh, this high ranking criminal named Selby. And through this, uh, Sam has to get into disguise as this other person, you know, which uh, is a funny thing. Uh, he's given a drink that is supposed to be his usual, and it doesn't look delicious to me. <laughs> you know, that drink. Mm, not exactly. I would I would try it, but I have to be a few drinks in. I couldn't do that sober. No way. <laughs> no, same here. You know, opening the snake up and everything else and using it. And the way he just downs it so quick just to get it over with man <laughs> he he downed it like a champ yeah. I'll, I'll give him that yeah he definitely knows how to Didn't take it in pretty nothing. quick mm-hmm. yeah so they they have to deal with uh selby in regards to learning more about former hydra scientist uh dr noggle and how he was trying to recreate the super soldier serum you know and unfortunately uh sam gets a phone call from his sister which uh he needs to put on speaker for selby to listen to and mm-hmm. once um, his sister uses his real name, unfortunately, 
uh, it leads to a, a fight and Selby gets killed. And then the bounty is placed on, you know, a Sam, Bucky and Zemo as they try to escape, which then leads us to reunite with none other than Sharon Carter, whom we haven't caught up with since Civil War. No. And it's you almost forgot that, that we... she. I'm sorry. No, yeah. you almost for... you almost forget that she was gone. <laughs> that she like vanished. Oh yeah, before. yeah. Because we never really um discussed her during um. We never really heard from her uh, after Civil War. You know, I don't think we even knew that she had the shield or she stole the shield. Apparently, no, we had no idea. None of this information was like available at all. <laughs> yeah. So like, as all this was going on, she was screwed. Basically, she's been like on the run in Madripoor as a fugitive, if you will, and making her own living, you know, with paintings and everything else, as we mm -hmm. saw. And she's not happy with Sam and Bucky at all, to say the least. No, I mean, if I helped save the day in Civil War, and then just like had to abandon all life and everything I knew, and do this whole thing, right to create a whole new life, I'd probably be really mad at the people who I was once involved with as a team, too. <laughs> so it's safe to say that she probably survived the blip, I think. Mm. And uh, she probably just spent those last five years on the run. Which... And, grow and growing a reputation for herself in this, this city. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, you can't yeah. help but feel bad for her, obviously. No, I was going to... There's a, there's a question, because they bring up this guy called the Power Broker, who apparently mm -hmm. runs Madripoor. Uh, what's the city called? Madripoor? Yeah, Madripoor. Yeah, and people are starting to say that. Well, we we can get into it later, maybe. But what if Saren Carter is the power broker? Oh, okay. And she's just hiding it. That'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting dynamic that adds to the show, you know, based on what we've seen so far. And mm -hmm. you know, it leads to, so it leads to the four of them. You know, I'm um, Sharon Carter now joins Sam, Bucky, and Zemo on this uh, mission to take down the Flag Smashers, at least for this moment where um, they find all these uh, storage facilities and and uh, it leads to a really cool battle. You know, it, it leads to a really cool gunfight. There's a fun moment between Sam and Bucky where Sam mentions that it's it's in every action film ever made when he just gets frustrated at Bucky's arm, you know, essentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, you know, like, like I said, like, I, yeah, I love their dynamic. You know, I love their, uh, how they, they, they hate each other, essentially, you know, but they can't help but, like have to work together you know it brings yeah. up fun chemistry yeah. and there's a fun little callback to uh that moment in civil war you know at the end of that battle where uh where uh, bucky asks sam in the civil war if he's gonna push his chair forward and sam's like no and now it's <laughs> reversed this time around yeah you know as zemo it's drives a really fun callback off. yeah it's a little callbacks and in speaking of callbacks i really like the use of uh some of the music cues from Civil War, if you noticed, uh, when uh, they reunite with Zemo, they use some of the old music cues to to kind of uh, harken back to that story. Yeah, I forgot that um, that Zemo had like a theme from Henry yeah. Jackman. I forgot that he created music. Yeah, Henry for Jackman's Zemo. theme. Yeah, it's it's very ominous. You know, it really uh, brings a bit of a tension obviously and i appreciate that's one one of the best things about this franchise is that they find ways to tie things back even the littlest details you know even another detail too. Years too speaking yeah. of those uh did oh, you yeah. see the picture of um when i i don't know that no this is going back now but they went to the museum for captain america and they showed there was a pit a, a, a cat an extra in captain america first avenger who took a picture of steve rogers holding up the taxi cab door and then yeah. that picture of the taxi cab door is in the museum. Which oh, is yeah, really I saw random that. Ass detail. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Although it's funny because obviously that specific screen cap was from the movie itself. And it's impossible yeah. for, <laughs> for a newspaper <laughs> photographer to get that exact photo. Very you know, great but... photographer. She should get a job somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. They probably should get an award or something for that photo. You know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... <clears throat> So they confront, so during the mission, they confront Dr. Uh, Noggle, you know, and he create, so before the blip, which he was a victim of, he was trying to recreate the super soldier serum. And then when he disappeared, and then when he re reappeared five years later, they decided to not continue the program. So he had to restart it from scratch, you know, and he ended up creating uh, 20 doses of the serum, which uh, Morgenthau uh, stole, you know, mm -hmm. and then... Unfortunately for Noggle, Zemo kills him, <laughs> you know, in, yeah, in the lab. Very, very violent. Yeah. 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 The show is very, 
this is the most heavy on the gun violence I've seen so far in any Marvel stuff, you know, which makes sense given that this is like a spot. This felt like an espionage and also uh, it makes sense given that this also has characters that are involved, you know, in like the army or in the air force and, and whatnot. Like these are soldiers, mm -hmm. if, if you will. And yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, this definitely gets really heavy on the action this time around, you know, and this one uh, leads to uh, to um, uh, so uh, Sam, Bucky and Zemo, they escape uh, and then uh, the Flag Smashers are still at large. And we have this moment with two of them, uh, one of them whom is played by uh, Ari, Aaron Kellyman, and she discusses with one of them about how she wanted to be a teacher before all this happened. You know, mm -hmm. and it's one of those moments where, like, what's great about television is that they could develop uh, characters in a way that movies don't have as much time to. They exactly. Don't give us character moments. Yeah. And that was a nice little character moment for one of the, you know, one of the villains, essentially, which has been a bit of a weakness for Marvel overall, I'd say, but with the exception of a few. Like, you think of Killmonger, you think of Thanos, you know. Yeah, sure. No, they've definitely um, improved in terms of giving like fleshing out like the antagonists and giving people like more meat to chew on, so to speak, I guess. Even if it's like one or two lines, the throwaway dialogue, like it, it really helps flesh everything out. Yeah. It's, and it doesn't need to be like, Oh, I'm going to go into my whole backstory and why I'm this and exposition. No. It's just like a simple character moments like that, that really make them more uh, dynamic and makes it more interesting for uh, the story and adds more tension to it. Yeah, you know, it's very like a little. It's very like two coworkers just trying to get through their shift, having a conversation yeah. oh, about yeah. whatever, like small talk. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, which all of us can relate to. And mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Zemo, Bucky, and Sam they travel to uh, Latvia in search of Morgenthau. You know, and while there, uh, Bucky reunites with uh, an old uh, friend of his from Wakanda. Uh, mm -hmm. It's none other than Ao, who's played by Florence Kasumba, whom we were first introduced to in Civil War when she was there with uh, with T'Challa. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's one of the Dora Malahe from Wakanda. And yeah, she's demanding to see Zemo because clearly she is not happy with Zemo. Uh, dude killed T'Chaka, uh, the king of Wakanda. Uh, oh, yeah. I would, I would definitely, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, of course. Which was a surprise because I didn't know Florence Kasumba was going to be in this. No, they you know, actually or... hid that, which is cool. Yeah, that's what I, I appreciate that they didn't show that or I didn't see many uh, headlines leaking that, which was cool, yeah. you know, and it ties into the rest of the universe in a way that makes sense. It's not like, oh, let's bring this character in, you know, so we could remind everybody this is a shared universe. Mm -hmm. It actually feels natural to the story because, you know, it's the Civil War connection connection to Bucky obviously when he was in Wakanda as White mm -hmm. Wolf right and that's where the episode ends so like uh just overall like uh how how are you feeling the show overall based on we're halfway through already you know we are halfway the first three episodes yeah so uh I um so like I mentioned before like I'm not I'm not I don't not like it I'm just not like loving it. I'm just, it's just kind of like mid tier for me right now. Like I, I enjoy these characters and I enjoy seeing what they're going through, but nothing's really wowed me yet. There are moments though that I really, really like. I love seeing Baron Zemo in this, the role he's in right now. And I, it does give you a nice, like, um, uh, it makes you, it makes it unpredictable. Like whether, is he going to stay, like, kind of like Loki, do you think he's going to stay good or is he going to like betray them and, and double cross them at some point? I have Sharon right. Carter. I think Sharon Carter is really cool so far in, in the role that we've seen her so far. And I think the choreography when she's kicking all those um, Black Smashers asses was like the best action. I think out of the whole thing I've seen so far, like, I was really impressed with the choreography and the uh, camera yeah. work in that one moment where she's like, she's like swinging around going like this, like, um, oh, yeah. and I'm just, I don't think we're going to go to Wakanda, but I do like this, this Wakandan perspective now with um, Ayo. Uh, and I want to see, yeah where that goes, how much is she going to be incorporated into the story? And is this going to like have more repercussions for Baron Zemo and Bucky and Falcon and everybody moving forward. And because I didn't, I wasn't expecting a, like a black Panther aspect to like hit the show. So I wonder how much oh, yeah. that affects everything. 
And so it, it definitely raises more questions for me. And a uh, really quick shout out to Baron Zemo doing a little, doing a little something, something in the club. Uh, everybody's talking oh, yeah. about that right now, but uh, it's fun oh, yeah, to see right, him right. Like, let loose a little bit, a little bit of dice yeah. going on there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And also he gets to put on his uh, mask, which we never get to see in Civil War, which yeah. uh, from his comics. And, you know, Marvel is really good at bringing their comic book uh, costumes to life. And so, yeah, th that's interesting. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Um, I actually, funny enough, I have I didn't catch these episodes the moment they aired or the instant they aired within the weekend. I took two or three days after each to uh, each drop to actually watch them, you know, because I got busy and I wasn't like. I like the show so far. I'm with mm -hmm. you. I, I like it. I, I really like these characters. I think the reason why it hasn't hooked me the same way WandaVision hooked me with like the moment each episode dropped, I had to watch it the moment it dropped, where it, I feel like this feels more routine in regards to what the MCU has done. The only thing that's keeping me coming back, obviously, is I, I like these characters, you know, and I, I enjoy this franchise already. So there's that, you know. But I think with me, it's just that the MCU, the things that always hook me the most is when it gets weird, you know, right. like, especially now. Like I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you, you kind of expect, like I said, like, there's some really good action. I dig the action, some great fight choreography. Uh, obviously, the characters are what keeps bringing me back. But in regards to like the show itself and how it feels, it feels very similar to like a lot of phase one where it's very kind of routine, obviously, sure. but with like the phase two or phase three level of character just involved, you know? And I also contend, and I think I saw it from Slash Film. There was an article on Slash Film that mentioned how the pacing kind of hinders it a little bit. And I wouldn't necessarily say it hinders it because for one, we also get more character development this way as a show. But given the scale and the way the action works out, this feels like it should be a movie in a way. But then yeah. again, I, I can't complain having more uh, time with these characters. It gives a chance for us to get to know, especially Sam more, which I appreciate. Yeah. You know, no, but agree. I'm with you. I, I'm digging it and it's probably going to pick up, obviously, as it goes on. My favorite parts are definitely like how it explores the history of the MCU, like hiding, you know, Isaiah, you know, mm -hmm. from from, you know, the public yeah. and how they don't know that. But uh, I definitely am looking forward to uh, what's coming up in the next three episodes, obviously. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I like it so far. I'm not as hooked as I was with WandaVision, you know, like I said, because I like the weirdness the most when it comes yeah. to the MCU. That's the but thing, too. I, I think it's, yeah. no, it's like there's nothing, like, there's no big question that's, like, drive, driving a narrative is what's, yeah. what, like, what you reminded me of, too. There's nothing, like, pushing a narrative that, like, intensely compared to wandavision where you always had these questions like these big which questions. fits perfectly for television like like wandavision's formula fit perfectly for television whereas this like i think works i think it would have actually benefited if this was like oh this is captain america 4 right if you will yeah for sure yeah, which I it agree. definitely feels like but elongated to fit more of a series which is a bit of a double-edged sword because obviously it's like i think this would have made a great film you know, for this these characters, but at the same time, making it a series gives us more time to develop them. So it's like, what would I prefer, this or that? Nah, whatever, you know, so. Yeah, no, it's for sure, I agree there. But yeah, so that was episodes two and three of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The first, uh, the second episode was called Star Spangled Man. The third one was called Power Broker. And we have three episodes left, which is, crazy to think it's it's so yeah. crazy by the way that we got two uh marvel pieces of marvel content uh so quickly close to each other it, it's it's a thing it's like only marvel's been doing this right now where like yeah we're just i i know we're spoiled but it, it is still insane to think if you sit down and think about it that we're getting all this stuff in one year and then we just got the loki trailer too which comes out like by the which time I actually haven't ends, seen yet a month from then you haven't watched the second trailer yet? Or the, yeah, I, I haven't guess seen the, the trailer, trailer. Yet. Yeah. Uh, It's really good. Really good. Raises a lot of questions. And it looks like it's going to be the same vein of WandaVision for me, where it's like this is not like one big question, but like a lot of like these, like is, everything is like so new, what they're doing with yeah. that. And it's like, what the hell is going on with this show? Yeah, when it comes to these Marvel shows, I'm most looking forward to the ones that go more experimental and weird. 
Yeah. Like, the only thing about WandaVision that, that I wasn't really fond of is how the finale, even though character wise, I felt was very satisfying. It felt very, very routine in the finale, like typical, like, oh, we need very to have trite. an action scene, mm-hmm. you know, very, you know, so like, it's not that I'm not looking forward to stuff like Hawkeye and whatnot, which I am looking forward to, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Haley Steinfeld in that. But I'm also just really excited for like, what if the animated show? That's going to be fun. And, yeah. Yeah. And also shows like Miss Marvel and uh, Moon Knight, you know, like I want to be, I want more new stuff that expands the things. And I do, I am looking forward to basically all of these shows, but I'm mostly looking forward to the stuff that's weird and new, you know, and uh, that's not a diss against Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which like you and I say, we're, we're enjoying it. You know, yeah. it's just a bit routine, you know, and it's we're kind of used to it. It's also personal taste too subjective. There are some people yeah. who probably like the random stuff a lot more than the weird stuff. Oh Yeah. Yeah, they're probably loving there are the people out this. there. Yeah, there are people who couldn't go past the first two episodes of WandaVision because it wasn't for them, you know, which is interesting. Yeah. But, you <laughs> know, that's but that's what's cool when there's a lot of op- different kinds of shows and movies out there. And also after Loki, Black Widow in July. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it'll yeah. still be it'll still be airing by the time Black Widow comes out. It'll still oh, be, yeah, it'll that's be mid- crazy. It'll be like midway through the, the uh, season, I think. That is crazy yeah. to think about, you know, and then Shang-Chi is going to be in September, you know, uh, Eternals and Spider-Man uh, No Way Home are still set for November and December. I you know? hope they stick. To those and I'm days. curious to see how long those stay, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, overall, like we're spoiled this year as Marvel fans, you know, <laughs> so there's that. For sure. <laughs> definitely, you know, as comic book fans in general, I, f- I felt very spoiled just in just having you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League and Falcon and Winter Soldier coming out at the same time. The content we're getting is insanely packed. But if g- given Godzilla and Kong's opening box office that record too. numbers, uh, if, if that's going to continue with these big temple movies, I think things aren't going to be moving anymore. Oh, we'll yeah. See. Which I must say, in regards to that, uh, having seen it in theaters, I-, I did an experiment. So after watching it in theaters, I went back home and turned it on HBO Max because I didn't want to watch it there first since my theaters are reopening uh, Absolutely. that week. Yeah. You know, and the difference is is like night and day, you know, especially the moment you come back. It's like, whoa, I just saw this on a 30 foot screen and I and we have a nice TV at home. It's a good TV, but nothing beats the screen. It's That's not all the same in that regard. No. Yeah. And especially, like, especially in these times, you if you're going to go to the theater, you want to be safe and secure and you want to make sure you're not like, you want to go because you can and not like you don't want to force yourself there but it, oh, it yeah. that is the kind of movie you wanted to watch on a big screen and absolutely Adam Wingard took takes full advantage of that with some of the like the way he shoots a lot of the action like it's it was insane to watch in a theater yeah sure without obviously me getting into my thoughts on the film itself I definitely could see I definitely echo your sentiment you know so mm-hmm. that's cool so anyways, that was uh, our discussion on the last two episodes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Once again, John, thanks for joining me again this week. Oh, of course. Thank you for inviting me. I always have fun talking about Marvel stuff with you. Always a, always yeah. a blast. Yeah, you know, and like we're spoiled, you know, and I got to say, you know, like uh, where can people find you? Uh, so anybody, you can find me on any pretty much any social media platform at Mothman Jones or John Matthew type one or the other. You'll find it. And he, like he's putting out a video for Godzilla and Kong soon. I will too be putting out a review for Godzilla versus Kong. Spoiler free. Should probably be. It should be out by the end of the week for sure. Probably by Friday or Saturday. And that's it. Nice, nice, John. And I have been Noah of Blank Green Canvas. Uh, expect more uh, content uh, coming up in the near future. Obviously, whether it's Godzilla versus Kong or any other discussions on film and television in the near future and more episodes of this podcast as well which you could find not just on youtube in the video form but you could also find through spotify apple podcasts google podcasts all through anchor.fm thank you very much and once again i am noah villaverde of blank green canvas and this has been john this this has been a great time happy national beer day <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening and watching, and we will be back again with you in the next two episodes. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.